All right, so I just finished playing uh, Nexamon Extinction on the Switch, and I don't know I had some thoughts about it, so I figured I'd do a quick video and just kind of lay them out. Uh, the video uh, for this is mostly just me playing for half an hour or so. Uh, it's not particularly synced to anything I'm talking about, uh, but I did try and at least go through it at various points. Uh, so if you don't watch the video, it doesn't really matter. But uh, if you do, you will at certain points see stuff that I talk about at other points. Uh, for those who don't know, Nexmon is uh, one of the kind of recent indie Pokemon style games alongside like uh, Temtem or Monster Crown. Now overall I did like it uh, quite a bit. But there were still uh, several odd spots that I didn't really care for, but uh, I am hoping that if they make a sequel, then they'll kind of iron those out. As for what I played of it, uh, I just played through the base story. Uh, there is apparently some kind of end game stuff you can do, uh, catching some of the like story related uh, legendary monsters and stuff like that, but I just did the uh, main story and then stopped. I don't typically play end game uh, optional stuff in most games unless it's a game that I like really really like. I guess starting at the uh, stuff that I didn't like in the game or that I thought was kind of odd would be the catching mechanics. That's kind of the first thing that stands out. I guess, you know, being a Pokemon style game, catching is uh, something you do a lot of. There's just a few kind of catching related mechanics that I thought were not really the most well thought out. Uh, the first one of them is that uh, in order to increase your chance of catching the monster, you have to give them food. Uh, and there'd be about, I think maybe 20 or 30 different food items you can buy. Uh, different shops around the world sell different food, and uh, each item of food costs about, I think it was about a third of what a Nexatrap, which is the Pokeball equivalent, costs. And giving food to the Nexamon can increase their uh, percent chance of catching them up to a uh, plus 40% chance. So I think it is always statistically worth it uh, in terms of uh, the amount of money you're using to use food first and then use the Nexatrap. Uh, and it does display the total uh, cumulative percent chance of catching based on what trap you're using and how much food you've given them. And there's also uh, whistles, they call them, that you find scattered around the world. And they give, uh, I think it's like a 3% chance each of catching uh, Nexamon of a certain type. So like a fire whistle gives you 3% extra for fire Nexamon. And so it'll display like, you know, plus 40% for having fed them a bunch, plus 9% for having three whistles plus 10% for having done damage, and so on, and then it'll have a sum, like, you know, you've got a 75% chance of catching them. And that's all fine, I don't really have a much of a problem with any of that, but the thing with the food is that each Nexamon has uh, typically three foods that they like, and then the rest they dislike, and so if you give them a liked food, it will give them uh, a higher percent increase of the catch chance whereas a disliked food gives a lower uh, chance. But which food they like doesn't seem to really follow any, you know, rhyme or reason. So you'll have, like, uh, a lion Nexamon, and you would think, okay, this guy's gonna like sausage and hamburger or whatever, various meat foods. But it, they'll end up liking, like, grapes and cupcakes or something like that. Although it does show the percent chance uh, increase as you hover over each food so you just cycle through your entire list of food until you find the one that they like and then give them that so this combined with you know being able to easily get large quantities of every food just by going around to the various towns and buying their stock of whatever it is they sell uh, means that the whole food mechanic doesn't really matter. It's a whole lot of extra complication for not really any interesting gameplay effect. You just end up cycling through the menu until you find the right food and then give that to them. The whole thing could have been simplified to something like what Dragon Quest Monsters does where 
you just have a generic monster food item and you give them that. The other part of the monster catching that I didn't think was uh, particularly well balanced was that there, in addition to the regular nexo traps, there's also various elemental ones. So there'll be a fire nexo trap that gives you an increased chance of catching fire nexomon. The problem that is that uh, these cost four times as much as a regular nexo trap, but they give like I think it's about a 20% extra ch percent chance of uh, catching. So you're statistically I think much better off to just use two or three food items and then a regular nexo trap or two regular nexo traps if you miss the first one than you are using the elemental ones. The other way to get the nexo traps is to craft them using uh, elemental shards, but these are uh, not particularly difficult or rare to find, but they're still, you're not exactly drowning in them. You aren't gonna have just extra ones lying around. Uh, and they can be used to make powerful stat boosting items for your nexomon. So they're much better off used for that than for crafting traps. There's also a lot of NPCs scattered around the world who want to want you to give them certain items, and many of them do want several different uh, elemental nexa traps. So I found I hardly ever actually used the elemental nexa traps. It was always better just to save them for NPC trades. The final odd thing with the catching is that when you are catching them, you, there's like a little uh, quick time event that comes up where you have to hit. I think it's about 10 buttons in sequence uh, in about, I think it's four or five seconds. And it's just kind of an odd UI design thing, but when it's showing you what buttons you have to press, it shows them in a circle. Uh, your character's hand is coming in from like the left, and then the circle starts just above his hand and rotates around to below his hand. Uh, so you would think that the button prompt should start just above his hand but they actually start like straight up at 12 o'clock and then kind of go around as you go around clockwise as you enter them. Uh, so at the beginning of the game, like I had no idea how to do it because I was assuming they would start at his hand and go around. And there's no indication at all that they're supposed to start at 12 o'clock. Moving on from the catching, uh, the next thing that I found kind of annoying was the level scaling. Uh, I'm not 100% sure what the formula they use is, but it seems to advance your advance all the levels of uh, both Trainer Nexamon and Wild Nexamon, uh, partially in relation to your story progress and partially to do with uh, your levels. Now, I would have been fine with it if it was uh, just to do with your story progress, like every main event bumps all the trainers up a little bit, uh, but having it also increase with your, your levels and also it seems to increase very rapidly with story progress Like it's not just a noticeable bump every time you hit a main a main event It seems to be like every little event gives everybody a couple levels It overall just ends up giving you a feeling that your entire team is just like scrambling to keep up by the end of the game, I just gave up on the idea of having a 6 Nexamon full strength team and ended up just having, I think it was like 3 Nexamon that I used entirely because it was just such a pain uh, swapping around to try and level up guys who had fallen behind a little bit because it would mean going back to grind between like every single story beat. And this kind of ties in with the next thing I didn't really care about the game, which was how the stats and the elements are balanced. Uh, it's similar to Pokemon where you've got a couple different elements and uh, el attacks of different elements and different Nexamon are weak or strong against certain types. But unlike Pokemon, it isn't like a two times or one half damage difference if you are super effective or not very effective. I'm not sure on the exact number, but it seems to be like maybe if you're super effective it's like times 1.2 and if you're not very effective it's like times 0.8. It's overall a very small difference, which means that, uh, you know, a slightly weaker Nexamon, like a level 40 versus a level 45, uh, even if they have a type advantage, they're still going to get destroyed. 
And if you've got a slightly stronger Nexamon, like you're using just two or three, and one of them is a couple levels higher than all the enemies you're facing, it doesn't matter about type advantage. That one guy can just steamroll everybody, even if he's weak against all the attacks, and he his attacks are not very effective. And there also doesn't seem to be any uh, same type attack bonus like in Pokemon. Uh, so uh, a fire Nexamon using like normal or fighting or whatever attacks uh, it doesn't seem to have any difference between using fire attacks so if you just get like a nexamon with high stats that has two different element type attacks then he just kills everything and there isn't any benefit in trying to swap around to be super effective this then combines with like the next thing i didn't really care for about the game is that it is very simplified uh, I'd say it's probably even more simplistic than Pokemon Red and Blue in terms of like the number of different mechanics and the complexity of them. Uh, for example, there's no dual types. All Nexamon are one type, even ones that, you know, based on their design, they, you really would think that they are two types. Like you'll have like a big, uh, you know, rocky Nexamon covered in ice and he'll just be an, a, an ice type. He won't be part rock type, even though all of his attacks are rock type. There's also no special physical split, all attacks just use attack and defense. There's also no abilities like in Pokemon, so that kind of really limits how they can differentiate different uh, breeds of Nexamon. There's also no breeding and no IVs or EVs, at least as far as I can tell. Uh, so this ends up meaning that uh, like a level 40 wild Nexamon is essentially the same as your level 40 Nexamon that you've raised. So you end up just kind of feeling like, okay, there's no point in raising Nexamon when you can just go out and catch a new one. And there's also no TMs or, you know, TM equivalent. Uh, there is a move relearner, essentially. Uh, she lets you learn any move on a Nexamon that he would have already learned uh, leveling up by that point. And then related to that, most of the attacks feel very samey and there's a very small pool of them anyways. The vast majority of attacks uh, just differ in terms of the amount of damage they do, their speed, the amount of stamina they use, and their accuracy. And there's no real like uh, difference in terms of element. Like it's not like electric type attacks are faster and earth types attacks are stronger and wind types attack are accurate or anything like that. Every element seems to have the same set of attacks where there's like a really strong attack that's really accurate but costs a lot of stamina and there's a weak a really weak attack that is really accurate and uses low stamina and a, a powerful attack with low accuracy and low stamina use and so on every element just has the same set of attacks basically and there are of course a few other attacks other than the basic damaging ones but a lot of them are or at least they seem to be very useless like you'll have an attack that uses the same amount of stamina as like a fairly powerful damaging move but all it does is has like a 30 percent chance of inflicting some minor status ailment or there's uh, attacks that uh, like there'll be a fire type attack that a fire type nexamon will learn and it will nullify any damage done to him from fire type attacks for the next two turns or whatever the only non-attack, uh, non-damaging non attacks that I ever ended up using was one of my Nexamon got a, a healing move that would heal 100 HP, which was, even up until the end of the game, uh, that was very helpful. And I think there was a few minor buffs, like uh, plus 15% attack and defense, but aside from that, I don't think I ever used basically any non- just damaging attacks. So all of these, uh, you know, previous things I mentioned, all, taken all together, they end up making all the Nexmon feel really samey. Like there's just not enough different stats and abilities and stuff to differentiate them between each other. Like there's, I think it's about uh, 300 different Nexmon, but all they really end up uh, being different on is their element, which there's only, I think, like seven elements, uh, no dual types. They basically every Nexamon ends up getting the same, uh, you know, high damage, high accuracy, high stamina usage attack. And then they have their amount of HP, their amount of stamina, uh, their attack, and their defense. 
Uh, the results with speed stat, but it doesn't seem to really have it make a huge difference. All it matters then is you attack before or after your enemy. So when comparing to Nexmon, it always ended up being like, okay, they're just the same. Like these two guys are, there's not really any difference between them. Or it would be like, okay, this Nexmon's just better and there's no reason to use this other one. And then related to that, I found you find uh, just way too many Nexmon of various types way too early in the game. Uh, like in Pokemon, you know, at the start of the game, you're finding Caterpies and Weedles and Pidgeys and kind of, you know, plain bugs and birds and stuff like that. And then eventually you get to like, you know, a water area and you can start catching some Krabbies and Seals and stuff like that. Or you go to a cave and there you can find Geodudes and Onyx and stuff like that. Uh, and it really gives the world like a cohesive feel of being the world of Pokemon. But in Nexavon, basically as soon as you step out of like the first uh, house or whatever into the first patch of grass, you're finding like fire lions and ice birds and uh, just, you know, a crazy variety of stuff. So I found this really kind of killed any sense of this being a cohesive world. And this also made it that there was no real like uh, sense of discovery when you finally do find like the really cool Nexamon because you've been running into them all along. You know, if every Pokemon was like Mewtwo and Articuno and stuff like that, when you actually got to them, you'd just be like, okay, well, I've caught a hundred of hundred just like this already. Moving on from that, uh, from the Nexamon themselves, uh, there are various NPCs around the world. Uh, quite a few, actually. Every town's got like uh, twenty of them uh, that they give you like a mini uh, mini fetch quest to do. Uh, and these are all like very simple, basic fetch quests. You know, they say, oh, bring me five potions and five revives, or bring me five uh, Nexa traps, or something like that. Uh, often you already have the item on you, so you just click A a bunch and then get whatever item they're giving you. Uh, and I really don't like this kind of like just clicking A a whole bunch to get stronger game design. Uh, it feels very like spreadsheet driven design like i imagine the developer they you know you make this uh, framework for you know this npc wants these items and gives these items and then just get someone to just enter a whole bunch of random stuff into a spreadsheet and then there's your content for your game it just feels kind of bloated uh like content for the sake of content uh, I would have much rather a smaller number of quests, like just a few per town that were actual, like, I don't know, more involved quests, like going to certain spots or fighting certain enemies or whatever. So that's it for kind of like the main, I don't know, gripes with the game. Uh, there are a couple other things that I think, you know, I'm kind of iffy on. Uh, one of them would be that very early in the game, there's two items you get, uh, the pickaxe and the running shoes. Both of them seem very oddly implemented into the game. Uh, I think they were maybe somewhat of an afterthought. Uh, the running shoes let you run away from Wild Nexamon with 100% uh, certainty every time. Now Wild Nexamon, uh, typically they appear in rustling grass if you're outside of caves. Uh, if you're in a cave, they just appear randomly, uh, like in most RPGs, you just suddenly get in an encounter. But the escape uh, success chance is typically quite low. Uh, and since Wild Nexamon scale, uh, they're always quite dangerous. So if you can't run away reliably from Nexamon, caves are very dangerous. Like you can quite easily, uh, you know, get your entire team ground down by Wild Nexamon. So being able to run away, like with 100% certainty, is extremely useful. And the running shoes are right near the starting area. Uh, I think basically as soon as you leave the tutorial, you could go and get them. Uh, but if I recall correctly, uh, they're just in some like random house. You just go in and just find them and then, uh, you know, you could easily miss them. I imagine there are people who just, they go through the entire game without them or they get them like right at the very end and they're like, oh, I, I wish I had got these earlier. And so it's odd because it's such a powerful item that you can get so early in the game or you could just miss entirely. So it kind of feels like they didn't really think that through the best, like they maybe should have given them to you halfway through the game or something, but 
like guaranteed give them to you in a spot where you couldn't miss them. Because as it is, it's just a gamble whether the player is going to basically completely change how the game works. And the other one, and I don't think this is as weird of a design choice, but it's the pickaxe. Uh, so in order to get the shards in the game, uh, which you use to make nexa traps or to make the stat boosting items, which is the better use for them, uh, you need to break these rocks that are scattered around the world, basically everywhere. Uh, and to break them you need the pickaxe, and the pickaxe is a technically optional quest reward uh, right near the beginning of the game. So somebody could, I think, technically skip it, although it would be very unlikely. It's in the tutorial area, and the guy comes over, like, talks to you, and then you have the option to go do his quest. So I don't think there's very many people who would miss it. But I've got to imagine there's somebody who just, uh, they're like, okay, I'll do that later, and then they, they left that area, and then they stopped playing for a week or two, and then they came back and just continued with the game and forgot about the pickaxe completely, and then, you know, just didn't get any shards or any stat boosting items, which again, that's going to like completely change the game for them. So I think that, like, that's a minor problem. I, I don't think there's that many people that would have that problem, but uh, more oddly, it seems like there's a lot of characters in the game who they say like, oh, you know, this cave has a lot of shards, you should maybe bring a pick pickaxe with you. And later in the game, there seems to be, in one of the towns, there seems to be like what was intended to be a pickaxe store or something. So I am wondering if at one point the pickaxe was like a consumable item that you would just buy like 10 pickaxes or whatever, and then each of them would break so many rocks before the pickaxe breaks. I don't know, it just feels a bit odd to me, like there's, there's something going on there. Uh, so the next thing is like the monster designs themselves. There were quite a few that I thought were really cool and I really liked their design. But overall I found they were kind of garish and they all look like Neopets or something. They're all several, uh, you know, bright rainbow colors with a ton of just extra design things, you know, uh, lines and stripes and spots and horns and stuff just scattered all over them. Now like with Pokemon, I typically prefer the early gen designs where they're, they're one color basically with different shades and, you know, very simple designs like actual animals. Uh, in Nexamon, like every Nexamon looks like a toucan or something in terms of color and design. And there were quite a few that I thought were really ugly, like Nexamon wearing clothes and stuff like that. Many of them seem to be designed along the same lines as some of the worst Pokemon designs. Although I think the, the quality of the art of the Nexmon, even if I don't like the designs, I thought was very good. Uh, the actual world art though, uh, like the overworld map and stuff, I really didn't like. I found it looks very kind of cheap cartoony. It reminds me of like a free-to-play mobile or Facebook game or something like that. The actual, the design of the uh, non, the NPCs and the player characters and so on during cutscenes and stuff, I thought was okay. Uh, it wasn't like uh, Japanese visual novel level quality or anything like that, but it also wasn't American-made how to draw manga for beginners uh, level of uh, poor quality. I'd say it was somewhere in between, like they looked decent enough anyways. And the final thing I wasn't really sure on was the Japanese translation. I started playing it in Japanese because that's typically just what I do, uh, just for the practice. Uh, especially with JRPGs, you know, it's a lot of reading, so it's good practice. But something felt kind of off with the translation, so I ended up changing it back to English uh, pretty quickly. Now I'm not like, you know, super native level or anything like that, so maybe a native speaker would see it and say like, nah, this is okay, but uh, I just kind of felt it was a little bit off. A lot of the phrasing and stuff just seemed a bit off of what games would typically use. Uh, I have a feeling that the translator uh, doesn't specifically focus on game translation, or that maybe it was translated just by like giving them an excel sheet of all the text and they just translated it like line by line or something like that with it really knowing the context. Uh, because I, after seeing the credits I looked up the translator and from what I can tell they don't you know they don't specifically do uh, game translation they seem to be just kind of a freelance uh, translate anything type of person. 
and having played uh, many of the Pokemon games in Japanese, because they're if you're learning Japanese, they're a really good uh, thing to play because they're typically aimed at kids, and they'll have uh, Kana instead of all Kanji, or you can I think in the newer ones you can have uh, Furigana. But I was noticing that a lot of the terminology seemed to be different, like when uh, you know you do stuff like catch an Examon or something. Uh, it would give you the option to put it in your party or send it to storage. But the term they used for putting the new Nexmon into your party was uh, Murei ni Okuru, which means like send into the, the clan or the swarm or the herd or whatever. Which I think uh, games typically would use something like Pati ni Ireru or something. Uh, so that what that was partially what kind of gave me the feeling that maybe this person doesn't translate that many games and didn't really look at a bunch of other games for reference. Or if they did look at another game for reference, they chose a strange one. Uh, there was also some, a couple like flat out incorrect translations I noticed. Uh, early on, one of the attacks one of my Nexamon had was, I think it was a normal type attack. Uh, but the description of it in Japanese said that it did electric type damage and So that got me confused because at that time I didn't yet know exactly how the combat was gonna work So I thought okay there there's normal type attacks that can do electric type damage uh, and then I would be confused why it wasn't super effective against water type next mon and uh, eventually I just changed it over to English and just found that oh no it, it does normal type damage That's just a mistake so yeah, I ended up, I decided it probably wasn't the best use of my time to be, you know, using this as Japanese practice. Uh, annoyingly, I think it, the game generates all of the uh, NPC trainer Nexmon names uh, at the beginning of the game. So since I started in Japanese uh, and then changed to English, all of the, the enemy uh, Nexmon had Japanese names even at the very end. Uh, so that's all of the things in the game that I really didn't like or was kind of iffy on, which seems like a lot. It will end up being a large chunk of the video. Uh, but I did overall like the game, and there were a couple things that I was uh, you know, quite impressed on. Uh, one thing I liked was how like quick the game was. Uh, when I played Pokemon Blue uh, a couple months ago, I was really taken back by just how slow it was. I just couldn't believe that, you know, as a kid, I actually played that at normal speed on actual hardware. Uh, because everything in Pokemon, especially the older games, is just mind-numbingly slow. Like, walking is slow, opening menus is slow, battles take forever, uh, you know, going into different areas is slow. Just, the entire game just runs like molasses. Uh, and the newer games aren't that much better. But uh, next one, I found it really did a good job with that. Like battles are basically, they go as fast as you can hit the buttons. Almost the battle animations are quite quick. Uh, all the menus are snappy. Uh, the walk speed is, you know, good enough. Uh, the next thing that I liked was uh, you're you're the typical silent protagonist, but you've got this uh, cat partner uh, right from the start who you know, goes along with you throughout the majority of the game. Uh, and he's a very kind of like fourth wall breaking, like this is all absurd type character. Uh, and he's constantly just making hilarious remarks, like, you know, your character gets a special item and like spins around and holds it up to the screen. And then he'll make some remark about that, about, like, you know, why are you spinning? You should go check, get that check with the doctor or something like that. Uh, even though I don't typically care for the typical like indie, you know, irreverent, fourth wall breaking, uh, self deferential humor or whatever. Uh, I did find it was well done and you know, I, I often went through cutscenes like just looking forward to what he was going to say next. Uh, the game also wasn't overly heavy on cutscenes or tutorials or anything. Uh, in fact, there was, I don't remember there being really that many tutorials at all, aside from like the early catch tutorial or whatever. Uh, there wasn't really any hand holding. Uh, there probably still were more cutscenes than I would have liked, but again, the cat made it okay. Uh, and the story itself was quite linear, but uh, it was okay anyways. Uh, I liked kind of the twists and turns and stuff. I didn't, it wasn't like you just knew right from the start exactly what was going to happen. 
uh, like you know in the Pokemon games it's always okay you you go out and you get the eight badges and you foil Team Rocket at some point and then you uh, fight the Elite Four and become the champion uh, and they'll they always put in a whole bunch of extra talking and stuff but it doesn't really change anything uh, but with Nexmon you know you're always like okay what's happening next and stuff like that so I thought the story was actually you know it was okay uh, and despite it being quite linear, the game itself doesn't end up being restricted by it. Uh, right from the start, you can go to pretty much everywhere. Uh, I think there's only like one or two towns that are locked behind the story progress. Uh, you can just go where you want right from the start and just travel all around, which was nice. And there's lots of different uh, items hidden around the world uh, that make exploring and searching even just random houses uh, good to do. Uh, like there's the whistles I mentioned before that give you a permanent catch increase uh, for various elements. Uh, there's also, you know, you can get boosts to the amount of experience you get and the amount of gold you pick up. Uh, and I think there was a couple other, you know, uh, special item types you can pick up here and there. Uh, so you're constantly just, you know, having fun exploring and getting rewarded for it. Also, I found the economy in the game was actually quite good. Uh, money was valuable, and I was often running out, uh, but I never really had to grind for it either. It was always just kind of right at the sweet spot of like, okay, you know, I'm running out of next traps, so I'm going to use all my money to go and fill up on them, and that'll last me for a while. Uh, and then you run, you kind of start to run low on healing items, which are very useful. Uh, so you go and you buy a couple more, and so on. So you're always kind of, you know, glad to get more money. Uh, and it's not like Pokemon, where by the end of the game, you just have, you know, millions of uh, money. So overall, it was pretty good. Uh, I am hoping that they'll make another Mex Nexamon game, and it will, you know, improve on a bunch of the stuff I mentioned. Uh, especially given the state of Pokemon. Uh, even though Nexamon did you know, miss a lot of the stuff that Pokemon has. I did think I enjoyed it quite a bit more than the last Pokemon games I've played, uh, and I can see it only getting better from now. Uh, and I didn't even get into, like, the uh, post-game stuff, and I think there was a fairly extensive New Game Plus or New Game mode uh, where you can start off with, uh, I think it's got, like, randomizers and stuff, and you can start off with whatever Nexmon you want or at least a larger variety. Uh, so it seems like they're really kind of more tuned into what like the Pokemon fans want than the Pokemon company are. Uh, so yeah, overall I would really recommend it to anybody who you know, liked Pokemon but is kind of fed up with uh, where they've been going.